Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the voice of reason. Today, we're going to do a shorter episode today on the uh, ongoing war between uh, the Russian Federation and Ukraine. Uh, it is now being reported that the first shipment of less than a half a dozen or so, a Leopard uh, 2 uh, main battle tanks have been delivered uh, by Poland uh, to Ukrainian forces. Now, these are the older, uh, for all intents and purposes, the first series of Leopard uh, 2 main battle tanks before they went through a uh, rather significant uh, periods of, uh, of upgrades. Now, be that as it may, it is still a very effective uh, platform. Uh, the uh, 120 millimeter Ryman Tall main gun is the same main gun that is used on the M1A1, the M1A2, and uh, all series of Abrams main battle tanks outside of the uh, the original uh, M1 with the uh, 105 on it. But uh, those systems have now been deployed. Uh, it would not surprise me at all uh, to see the uh, Russians use very expensive expensive ballistic missiles, i.e. Uh, uh, Iskander, or uh, even uh, launched from uh, MiG-31s, the uh, Dagger uh, air-launched semi-ballistic missile to attack some of these targets would not surprise me at all uh, before they can be deployed uh, for. Now, will it, uh, are the Russians very much concerned about the deployment of uh, of four to six uh, Leopard two main battle tanks. Absolutely not. What's important for the Russians is the PR that they would receive uh, if they were able to destroy these Leopard twos before they even uh, cross the the Dnieper River in the uh, in the east. Uh, I also believe that uh, we could see Challenger main battle tanks, we could see some of these Leopard main battle tanks, maybe not on the front lines directly against Russian forces, but keep an eye out on Transnistria. It, it looks like Western narratives are trying to shape opinion that, uh, that in which they could articulate a, uh, a preemptive operation against Russian forces in Transnistria. Uh, that would mean that we would see Ukrainian forces operating against this area, probably in support of Moldovan and Romanian forces uh, as well. Now, obviously, there is a very large uh, ammunition storage facility uh, in the Transnistria region that is part of the uh, Russian operation to keep forces there. Now, how effective are, are, are those uh, munitions that are being stored there? Uh, what, what sort of state are they in? Difficult to say at this point. But it does appear that uh, the Ukrainians are eyeing this area very, very closely, as are uh, Romanians and the, uh, the Moldovans as, as well. So we'll see what happens here in the coming days, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if we see the deployment of some of these newer systems if and when we see the Ukrainians decide to make a move on Transnistria. And, and again, they're shaping that narrative where they appear to be, at least on the surface, uh, entertaining the idea. Uh, the idea that the Russians are going to launch an operation out of Transnistria is simply absurd. Uh, the capabilities of those Russian forces in Transnistria uh, are, are not ready to undertake any sort of military operation, be it against Moldova or Ukraine for that matter. There's just not enough of them, and uh, they're, just, they're just not supplied to the extent that uh, would uh, see any sort of effective operation uh, by Russians. But what it does do is for the uh, dumbed-down, low-information person in the West who, uh, who just loves spending most of their time watching Kim Kardashian and, uh, and transvestites play with themselves on TV, uh, this would uh, obviously uh, merit some sort of operation 
by the Ukrainians that uh, they could effectively shape and effectively change the narrative that they were c- conducting a preemptive operation. So, anyway, that's what I uh, I believe uh, could happen. Is it going to happen? Difficult to say. Uh, I, I think at a certain point uh, the uh, the U.S. may uh, may tell the Ukrainians not to do it and stick to defensive operations in the east. But uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, again, the fighting continues in the east as well. Uh, the Russians continue the pressure campaign as we've talked about yesterday, and uh, and things are not going good in Bakhmut, and we anticipate the fall of Bakhmut uh, within the next month. I would say. Could be wrong, could be right on that. We'll, we'll see what happens. But uh, that is the information for right now. We're still watching very, very closely what sort of systems the Chinese could provide to the Russians. Uh, these, these, in all likelihood, would be systems that, again, uh, loitering, loitering munitions that uh, the Chinese could create a plausible deniability and say, well, these aren't our systems, these are these are someone else's systems. But it wouldn't surprise me at all if we start seeing an uptick in some of these uh, more advanced loitering systems uh, being delivered to the Russians. And at the same time, the Russians are manufacturing their own systems as well. And we will continue to see the Russians do that. But uh, that's where we sit for today. Uh, more to come very, very soon. Uh, thank you for joining us on this uh, brief uh, edition of our coverage of the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine. Thanks for joining us. Have a good day.